Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll show how to save your state of work in Git. And later, we'll see how to share that work with other developers. So let's begin. In this project, we will use Node.js as our language for development, but it really doesn't matter. This course is not at all about JavaScript or Node.js development. Uh, it's all about saving the states of the project in the uh, in Git. So the parts where I'm doing the actual programming, the actual code, if you're not really into Node.js or you don't really quite get what's happening in the code, that's okay. You can just skip it. The main thing is that you see that the files are changing, the new content is appearing, and the other developers are seeing those changes in their own environments. So now, without further ado, let's go and review what we're gonna do today. So our plan for today is first to add several files to project and start to track them. So we will have to tell Git that the file is tracked. So please keep, Git, keep an eye on that file and make sure that whenever I change it, you spot that thing. Commit the file and then edit it again because the file will have several versions during its lifetime and commit it once again. As we do these things, you'll see how Git stores the history and what kind of information about the history you can get at the end. So let's jump into Bobby's workspace. Hello, Bobby. So let's start from the good old tradition of programming. Let's create a program that prints Hello World into the screen. Let's make sure that this program kind of works and then we'll save the state of our code. So let's begin from making a main.js file. So in main.js, I will write super simple um, super simple statement in JavaScript. Just to keep it a little bit closer to real life. And then I will try this thing and make sure that it really prints hello world. Yep, the text has just appeared. So this is already a quite good place to store the file, right? So what I need to do before I store the file, the command that is super handy and that you will be typing very frequently, it's git status. Let's type it. Th with this command, you will ask git to show what is the current state of the working copy, what is the current state of things in this folder. So git status. So uh, so what we have here, we uh, see here nothing added to commit, but untracked files present. What basically it says is that here I've got a file called main.js. It is not tracked, meaning that Git doesn't really pay attention to that file. This file is showing in red. And being quite helpful system, Git straight away uh, gives you a suggestion. Git add file to include in what will be committed. Right. So what we now want to do is we want to make our first snapshot of the system. And to make it, we need to tell Git which files will go to that snapshot. So I will type another command, git add, and I will pass the name of the file that I want to add, main.js. Now, if we type git status again, what you'll see is that this file becomes green and git says new file main.js. Right? And just in case you did it by mistake and you want to get everything back to its place, you can always call git rm minus minus cached file to remove it back. But in this case, we did it for purpose. So we are now ready to commit. So let's type the our most fascinating command that saves the state of the system. Git commit. Now, if I hit git commit, what will happen, Git will open up an editor to allow me to enter the message with the commit. So in Git, every commit, every state of the system is associated with message, meaning that you need to kind of explain, uh, tell a couple of words about what exactly has changed, right? And to do that, Git opens an editor for me. So all the lines that start with hash will be ignored. So I'll add a commit message uh, right here or right here. And I'll say something, hello world has been created. Awesome. Now I'm saving the file and Git finishes its commit, right? Now let's clear the screen and run a Git status again. Git status. 
and it will say your branch is based okay branch is based on the region master will talk about this part of message a little bit later but this part is important nothing to commit working directory clean that means that there is no untracked files so all the files in directory are tracked or ignored we'll speak about ignored files later and well we are good so there is no changes that we forgot to commit now let's repeat this cycle but this time what we have is main gs is the file that is tracked meaning git pays attention to the changes of this file let's try to edit this file again and uh, see how git reacts on that so what i'll do i'll start editing this file and um let's let's maybe do something like this let's add the header saying horoscope horoscope app by Bobby and Jenny and I'll delete this this line at all okay and now what will git status say that we modified something right so we've got here the modified file that will not yet be added to the new commit so in git whenever you want to save the state of the system you must explicitly tell git i want to include this file so this file right now it is tracked meaning that git knows what has changed exactly right by the way if we type git diff main js you will see what has been changed exactly so git knows what was the state of the file before now it knows the current state of the file it can compare the file together however to commit this file and to create the second snapshot of the system what we need to do is to type git add main js again right and now let's type git status again again modified this time main js so you remember last time the text here it said new file main js this time it says modified main js which is kind of good so everything that is listed here will be added to the commit and this are the changes that go together with the commit so we are now created the second snapshot of the system and we again want to ask git to save this snapshot so to do that we'll use a little bit shorter version of git commit com command and this time instead of waiting for the editor to pop up and uh, promote us to enter some text we'll add the minus m flag into command line this means message and by passing message from the command line straight away you're kind of cutting the corner so uh, git will not have to pop up the editor and will wait till you enter it you can just enter it from command line so um okay fixed title or change the title this is a good message okay now we have committed successfully no errors here and what we can do now is to ask what was the history git and to do that i'll hit git log once i enter it you'll see some details about the snapshot of the system that we just saved so these small snapshots as you probably guessed already are called commits so in this video we have created two commits and both of them are now visible on the screen so we've got this long long number and we'll talk about it a little bit later uh, we've got a little bit more information we've got the name of the author bobby and his email remember that's the thing that we configured in one of the previous videos the username and email here's where this thing appears now the date of the comet tuesday uh 4th of august this is the uh, time when i shoot this video and this is my time zone i'm in hong kong time and the second commit right this world hello world has been created this is the first commit and this is the second one right if we were to dive a little bit deeper and see what were exactly the changes of the commit what were the files added or deleted in the commit we all could do that with the help of the command line but let's do that step by step let's not rush in and do that in the next videos so right now we are ready to start sharing our code with jenny right now jenny will still not get the code 
if even if she clones the repository, the code will not be available to her. Why? Because the commits that we did, they right now they reside only in .git folder of Bobby. If yet it hasn't been yet uh, sent to the server, we'll see how to do that in the next videos. And for now, let's just have a brief summary what we did and what we plan to do in this video. We plan to add the file to the project and track it to tell Git, please make sure that you're looking at the changes of this file. Did it? We used git add command for that. We committed the file, right? So we created our first commit and we learned what is a commit message. There is two ways to create a commit message, which is using the editor that will pop up automatically or by the command line, right? Uh, you, we changed also the file and committed the second version. This way we created two commits that represents two snapshots of the system. And you saw that to create the second commit, we also had to issue the git add command. This way, each git command basically can do multiple different things depending on the context. So for example, git add can add the file to basically to tracked, so that git sees what are the changes, or it can add the changes from the file to the next commit. Right, so git add will behave differently depending on what is the file. And finally, we used git diff to see the difference between the files and git log to see the changes. Wow, we learned so many commands just in one video. Git status, git commit, git add, git log, and git diff. Five commands in one video that basically show you the very simple workflow and already git is useful for you because now if you change your file in an absolutely wrong way, you do something absolutely terrible and you don't remember how to get back, you can always get back with help of a couple more Git commands that we'll learn in upcoming videos. See you then!